This program is made possible by a grant from the Isla Carroll Turner Friendship Trust. Produced by the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston School of Nursing, Center on Aging and the Dental Branch. Yes, I did. Oh, okay, so we're going to go get your mouth all freshened and brushed up, okay? Help with oral hygiene preserves smiles and well-being for long-term care and nursing home residents. Daily care of the mouth and teeth is important for the resident's oral comfort. An unclean mouth can be painful, and bad breath can prevent the socializing so important to feeling well. This video will help you understand the need for and give you the skills to properly assist in oral care. You'll learn how to identify good oral care, how to spot problems, make changes for residents with special needs, and properly care for dentures. While good oral care prevents mouth problems, poor oral care can have unexpected consequences. Poor nutrition can result when a sore mouth prevents a resident from eating. Increasingly, research shows that gum disease, stroke, aspiration pneumonia, and other infections are all linked to the same bacteria. As the resident becomes sicker, the bacteria in the mouth becomes more capable of causing infections. When that bacteria is inhaled, pneumonia can result. And gum or tooth infections can cause higher blood sugar levels in diabetic residents. The same medications that help residents feel better often contain sugar that causes tooth decay. Sugar-free medications are a better alternative. When not available, the resident should always rinse their mouth with water after taking sugary prescriptions. Medicines and medical conditions also can cause dry mouth. Dry mouth can lead to tooth decay and gum disease. Moisturizing products are available to help dry mouth problems. When it comes to the degree of help needed, some residents may simply require reminding and a little help when brushing their teeth or cleaning their dentures. Others may require that the caregiver perform the entire procedure for them. If a resident cannot complete other ADLs or activities of daily life, such as bathing or going to the bathroom alone, some level of assistance cleaning their mouths is needed. Generally, residents with physical limitations due to stroke, arthritis, or muscle weakness require special assistance. Likewise, residents with dementia or altered consciousness often cannot care for their mouth adequately without help. You can easily tell when a mouth has been properly cared for. This mouth has been cleaned daily. The tongue, gums, and tissues in a healthy mouth are usually a shade of pink or coral pink. This tissue will often be pigmented in people of color. Similarly, you can look for signs that a mouth needs more care. The resident taking blood thinners may have slight bleeding upon brushing, but profuse bleeding should be reported. As a rule, healthy tissues do not bleed. Also, bleeding can simply be a result of infection caused by bacteria and poor oral hygiene. Usually, the bleeding will stop after a few days of adequate brushing and rinsing with a mouth rinse such as chlorhexidine or Listerine. Bad breath can indicate decay. Redness is an early sign of gum problems. Generally, very red or very white lesions should be referred to a dentist for examination. And cracked lips or mouth corners and food particles or plaque in the teeth are clear signs the mouth hasn't been properly cared for. This mouth was not cleaned properly. A sponge toothette was used. As you can see, the sponge tooth that is not capable of removing the plaque and debris that form daily on the teeth, whether the resident eats or is fed through a tube. Mr. Wilson's stroke affects the left side of his face. As a result, he has decreased sensitivity and feeling on the left side and is unable to tell if food or debris is lodged inside his cheek. When he tries to brush his teeth, he can't tell how well he's cleaning that side of his mouth. After a stroke, it's important to assess the assistance level needed and help with oral hygiene accordingly. Mr. Wilson, I wanted to check to see how well you were cleaning your teeth. Geriatric dentist Dr. Thank June you. Sadowski of the UT Houston Health Science Center Dental Branch gives Mr. Wilson her expertise. All right, I'm 
haven't used this toothbrush. Is that okay? I'm going to cradle your head in my arms. Always explain to the resident that you're going to clean their teeth before you approach their mouth. Be gentle with them and careful not to make them feel ashamed of their oral conditions. Check the area inside the cheek after meals and administration of medications to be sure there's nothing trapped there. Some medications can burn the tissues of the mouth if left in contact with them. Here's an example of a tissue burn from an aspirin. Foods that remain in the mouth will contribute to bad breath or gum disease, and foods with sugar can cause teeth to decay. After the initial assessment, the first step in providing oral care is make sure you and the resident have the appropriate equipment. A small, soft toothbrush, either manual or powered, with or without paste is recommended. Toothpaste is not necessary, but can make removal of debris easier. A small amount, about the size of a pea, is all that's needed and is not harmful if swallowed. If suction is not available and danger of aspiration is a concern, the toothbrush can also be dipped in chlorhexidine or Listerine. Other helpful devices to assist with oral care include tongue blades and gauze. When cleaning the mouth of an unconscious person, gauze-wrapped tongue blades can aid in propping open the mouth. Gloves and a face mask can make the caregiver more comfortable and decrease the spread of germs. When the resident is a stroke survivor, like Mr. Wilson, have him turn to his unaffected side or tip his head slightly forward. It's easier to brush someone's teeth from behind. Hold his head in the crook of your arm to keep it still and to avoid injury if he's seated. Apply cocoa butter to the resident's lips if they're dry. Using a soft toothbrush with a pea-sized amount of toothpaste, brush the teeth with gentle pressure. Concentrate on cleaning the teeth at the gum line to prevent gum infections. Angle the brush toward the gums and brush each tooth with small circles or tiny back and forth strokes moving from tooth to tooth gently, but with enough pressure to remove debris. It's important to brush every tooth. Start on the upper back teeth on the resident's good side and brush all the outside surfaces, upper and lower. Then do the same on the inside surfaces. Finally, brush the biting surfaces of the teeth. The tongue should be brushed since many bacteria can become embedded in the taste buds. Be careful not to go too far back on the tongue as it can gag the resident. Rinse the resident's mouth with mouth rinse, water, or alcohol-free mouth rinse if possible. If not, wrap gauze around your gloved finger and wipe out the mouth. Then apply cocoa butter to the resident's lips. Mrs. Peters can't grip small items such as a toothbrush handle with her fingers. There are several very simple methods for building up the handle of a manual toothbrush. A washcloth can be wrapped around the handle and secured with a rubber band to aid width. A tennis ball or other object can also be used to give additional mass for enlarging the grip. A power toothbrush comes with a larger handle and can also provide the motion necessary for residents who may have difficulty with the movements required of a manual toothbrush. Items that are not recommended include sponge cleaners, as they do not clean well. Items containing any kind of acid, even a weak one like hydrogen peroxide, can decalcify or decay the teeth and should never be used. Petroleum products such as Vaseline tend to dry out the oral tissues. Medicines that contain sugar should be substituted with sugar-free medicines, such as those for diabetics. If these are not available, the mouth should be rinsed with water following the medicine. Jelly packs used for administering medicines should be avoided unless they're sugar-free. Mrs. Slatechek is an 89-year-old woman with a medical history of hypertension, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and dementia. A recent complaint is pain while eating. As a result, she started losing weight. Her examination reveals dry mouth, decayed teeth, and abscesses around her remaining teeth. She was unable to perform her own oral care. Well, even people who have taken really good care of their teeth their whole life may experience tooth problems and tooth loss due to poor nutrition or genetic problems. And each resident needs their own daily regimen of oral hygiene, whether they have teeth or not. 
Mrs. Sladecek can always taste her food better after the nursing assistant massages her palate and cleans her mouth. The assistant knows just how far back she can reach before triggering the gagging reflex. When performing the cleaning with wet gauze is the time to check for lesions, discolorations, bleeding, cracks, or swelling of the soft tissue. Also, any teeth that are sensitive will respond to touch. Using a toothbrush may be helpful for stimulating the gums and brushing the tongue. The nursing assistant brushes the tongue gently with forward strokes. An ulcer on the side of Mrs. Sladecek's tongue could be significant and must be reported to a nursing supervisor. Most oral cancers occur in the floor of the mouth, but can occur on the tongue and must be noted in the chart and examined by the dentist. Dentures should be brushed daily to remove plaque and food. Wear gloves and clean over a sink filled with water so dentures won't break if dropped. Brush all surfaces with a denture brush and paste. Soak in denture cleaner solution or water overnight so the dentures will not dry out and no longer fit. Cleaning the mouth with a gauze-wrapped finger removes debris, stimulates circulation, and cleans away film and secretions that interfere with taste. When cleaning a mouth okay. with gauze, make sure that the gauze is well moistened to prevent tearing delicate tissues. Also, massage okay. the gums and nearby tissue and the outside surfaces of the teeth. In this video, you have learned the critical role you play in maintaining good oral health for your residents. Doing so improves nutrition, lowers risks of gum disease, stroke, pneumonia, and other infections, while helping those with diabetes avoid oral infections that cause their blood sugar levels to rise. Now you can recognize the pink, coral, or pigmented tissue of a healthy mouth. And you know the presence of bleeding, redness, ulcers, dry mouth, debris, and or bad breath signal a need for greater attention to the individual's oral care. You now know the basic steps to good mouth care you should perform twice daily. Wash your hands and put on exam gloves. Tell the resident you will clean their mouth with toothpaste and mouthwash and end by applying cocoa butter to their lips. Put a pea-sized amount of toothpaste on a toothbrush. Brush the resident's teeth with gentle pressure, beginning on the inside back uppers, then on all sides and biting surfaces. Rinse with water or wipe the mouth with moistened gauze. Apply cocoa butter to the lips if dry. You can change your technique to fit a resident's individual needs. For stroke survivors, hold the head from behind in the crook of your arm. For those with severe arthritis or other disabilities, use an electric toothbrush or modify a manual toothbrush with a washcloth, tennis ball, or other object to make it easier to handle and manipulate. Finally, always clean dentures over a sink filled with water. Brush all surfaces with a denture brush and paste. Soak dentures overnight in a denture cleaning solution or water. Good oral hygiene is critical to good nursing and the elder loving care you strive to provide for your residents. <laughs>